struggling to be a wife because they did not get the foundation in order right early. Some people are struggling to be mothers because nobody modeled it for them when they were growing. Some people are struggling to be uh, entrepreneurs, are struggling to be social influencers because they did not get the foundation of it right. So if you get your singlehood in order, it will help you to navigate the seasons of being married and being a mother. This is the foundation of your season. This is the foundation of your global destiny. So the Lord is calling you as a single sister to work on yourself. So your assignment now is to do what? Care for the things of the Lord. That means there are things that pertain to the Lord and there are things that pertain to the world. So as a single sister, if you give yourself, if you give your attention to the things that pertain to God, he will take care of other things that pertain to the world. Are we together? If you want to be a faithful wife, a prudent wife, which is a gift from the Lord, take care of the things that pertain to the Lord, and then you will have the other one. Amen? Amen. Oh. So the problem we have with single ladies in our generation is that we want to jump the gun. No. Your first mandate is not to be married. Because we erroneously think that we are created to marry. That's not the assignment firstly. There's something the Lord wants to do with this season of singlehood first of all before he transits you to the season of being married. There are some tools you will learn as a single person that will help you when you get married. Amen. So if you miss this season and just live your life to be married and join the God, you will not be an effective wife and you will not be able to carry God into your marriage. So the Lord expects of you now to do what? Develop the things that pertain to God. He says, how that she may be holy in body and in spirit. So the Lord is calling the single lady for a spiritual development. I would always say that there is nothing as bad as seeing a lady who has learned the art of makeup. Learn the art of fashion without any mental development. That's a bad person to meet. So somebody knows everything about fashion, knows everything about makeup, but doesn't have anything upstairs. So it's so difficult to engage in conversation with that kind of person because her mind is not developed. But the Bible says concerning Jesus, and Jesus grew in wisdom. He did not just grow in stature, he grew in wisdom. So your single state is a state of mental development where you give yourselves to developing your mind. Who am I? Why am I on this earth? What has the Lord called me to do? How will I please the Lord? Serve the Lord with my intelligence. That would help you. Then you are developing, you are going for skills that can improve you as a person. Our sister was talking about personal grooming. You wake up after personal transformation. One of the keys to personal transformation is mental development. There is nothing as sweet as meeting a lady who is undergoing mental development. Your conversations with her are seamless because she understands the frequency with which the conversation is coming. Do you know the worst people to pastor are people who have not undergone mental development. They are the worst people to pastor. If you, if you say, hey, they will think you're in, I mean, the level of inferiority complex and damage that has been done in their mind is so difficult. And unfortunately, we have it like this in the East. Amen. People without mental development are even answering the call of God. So somebody opens a prayer house with, and she doesn't read the Bible. She doesn't, cannot read the Bible. She cannot open one line. So you go for a prayer house meeting. Somebody just did abracata, abra, abra. I don't know if you saw that video of a man of God that gave jig to church members and they drank. And when you're asking yourself, you're like, professors are in this meeting, nurses are in this church. It's like nobody has sense. And they were so bewitched to drink jig. How you know a prayer house is that the word of God is not taught there. That's how you know a prayer house. People can be praying, but they don't teach the word of God. One of the ways to also know a prayer house is that even though they teach the word of God, they always teach it in the negative. Somebody is pursuing you. Somebody is after your life. Somebody is this. Somebody is that. All their dreams are in the negative. And there is a bewitchment coming over you. Something is wrong. The tree in your village is a 
ah, ah, what is going on? Even the things that wisdom can solve is attributed to demons because we don't know light. So in the East here, unfortunately, many of us are victims of wrong fellowships because we refuse mental development. Your single season is a single season of mental development. What do I mean by mental development? Going to school, reading books, reading books. You are not too young to go to school. Amen? You are not too young to go to school. You are not too old to go to school. I don't know if it has come down to Anisha. But in Abba, you hear things like school has come. Have you heard anything like that before? School has come is a statement made by stupid people who have refused to go to school. Do you know why they make those statements? Because when they enter the area market, they find that big boys who are commanding money, importers and exporters, don't have any form of education. But what they don't know is that the accountants that work for those big boys, all of them are what? Educated. So, guess what? That the reason why the importer, importer's business is surviving is because there are educated people around them. Do you know the worst thing that can happen to you is that you're applying for a, a job and a, a result that should have been B, you made a C, was what cut you off. And you know that your work that you wrote there and you had only five Fs is work for life. Oh. That thing will follow you for life. Are you aware? So you see, opening your mind to put in the wisdom that will change your life is one of the skills that is needed in these last days by a single person. So in your single season is when you groom yourself and in knowing the Lord. In your single season is when you be strong in the Lord. You have to be a strong Christian. See, the deception that is happening in these last days will not catch you if you're a strong Christian. Amen? Amen? I remember when I was in first year, one so-called man of God met me. You know how they, they're always looking for who to meet? Hungry people. So he met me and he said, that the moment I'm going home now, there is a friend who will come and visit me. That the first person that visits me is the witch that is causing my problem in life. And I don't have any which problem do I have? Which, you know how your daughter tells you, mommy, I'm going through a lot. I wonder, what are you going through? Somebody that is 11 years old tell you, mommy, I think I'm going through a lot. So what are you going through? You have not even seen a lot. It's when you grow up now that you see the real a lot. You're just navigating common entrance, entry university, say you're going through. What are you going through? So, you, the, the, what was I going through in first year? Nothing. He said, there's a witch that wants to stop my destiny. The first friend that visits me. Guess what? When I traveled home, nobody visited me. Fake. Nobody. I, I went home quietly. None of my friends knew I was back. Nobody visited me. So that's why, beware of false prophets. Some of us have been victims of these false prophets. Even if somebody came to your house, and so on. So you now see that you are now, you know, idolizing spiritism. It's called third party Christianity. We have it a lot in the East. Third party. Do you know what is third party? Where you are asking somebody to worship God on your behalf. Meanwhile, the veil is broken. And Jesus has given you access to come directly to him. But because we, we like substitutes, we are lazy worshippers. We worship the God we don't know. We now relegate our worship to somebody else who will worship for us. So we ask somebody to worship for us. We ask somebody to pray for us. And we come into that mindset to Christ. You now begin to idolize when you don't know God for yourself. So you must be what? A strong Christian. How do I become a strong Christian? That's the way I'm rushing to. How do I become a strong Christian? Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. How do I become a strong Christian? The Bible says, somebody say finally. It says, finally my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Let's read verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. So I want to go back to verse 10 and I want to read it. It says, Finally my brethren, be strong where? 
Be strong where? I love this scripture so much because many people are strong in fashion. The Bible did not say be strong in fashion. Many people are strong in their beauty. The Bible did not say be strong in your beauty. Many people are strong in their wealth, finances. The Lord did not say be strong in your wealth. Many people are strong in their businesses and their shops. There is a member I have in, in church that worships her shop. There is no day, even if you call her for any meeting, she cannot close her shop to attend the meeting. If not, let the heaven and earth pass away. I say, no, your strength is in your shop. You have idolized and you are worshiping the shop. And that means the day you, you're not even doing business well. That means the day you travel, your shop will travel. The day you do this, your shop will follow you. The day you are sick, your shop will be sick. So the Bible says, be strong in the Lord. I want to ask you a question. What are you strong in? Many people have different strengths. They tell you, this is my area of strength. This is my area of weakness. And the Lord is saying, what is your area of strength? What is that thing that you call your area of strength? The Bible says, be strong in the Lord. Let your boast be in the Lord. Let your glory be in the Lord and not in anything else. Many people are strong in different things. In their academics. What is that thing that when you think about yourself, it gives you pride? Some people, when they look themselves in the mirror, that's their strength. Nah, you my pointed nose, my legs. Nah, I'm a baby girl, I'm a fine girl. And we're deceived. We are de you say, if you have it, flaunt it. And that's the kind of life you're living. You're flaunting. Every time we see you on social media, you're saying, check out the legs. The, you know, I have not understood why somebody will make a video. You're not saying anything. You're just moving your tongue. What, is the, what on earth is the meaning of this revolution? We're in trouble as a generation. No? We are in big trouble as a generation. Somebody will be doing Snapchat. Everything is modified for you. There is modification of idolization of the body and self. So there is an app that gives you hair if you don't have hair. There's an app that helps you apply eye pencil if you don't have eye pencil. There's an app that helps you red lipstick. So immediately you start videoing with the app. You are seeing, uh, you don't, there's no hair there. Have you not seen the app? The, the, the app gives you hair. So everything is about us. The worship of us. How we should look. How you should be strong in the way you dress. In the way you walk. Like my sister was teaching us grooming. In, you, you, keep your leg in order. Walk like this. Huh? Walk like this. Hey, dust your packaging. So that when the world sees it, you are looking fine. Keep everything now is about us. That's why we are imploding. The world has had too much of us. That's why in Acts chapter 2, there was a sound from heaven. Because we are tired of sound from earth. We are tired of the sound of men. The Bible said there was a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind. So we are tired of many people are making noise. Deceiving themselves. You go to social media, people are, hey, somebody was telling me that one out of every five people in Lagos now have done liposuction. Liposuction. You know what is liposuction? You remove fat from your stomach, which is very important. Look at this place now. Too much day here. You remove it and you put it on your bum bum. So anybody you see with a very tiny waist and a big bum bum is what? Lipo. Is lipo. Liposuction. So that your lady that you are watching and saying, cook, cook a ton, cook a ton, is liposuction. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. For all of you that went and put it on your status. Oh, go here, there. Go, ho, ho, go. I hope you are seeing the lifestyle. So it's not a bad thing for somebody to win and become Guinness Book of Record Breaker for cooking. But what lifestyle does a person model? So while you appreciate the resilience and the hard work, don't imbibe the lifestyle. Don't imbibe. So there's somebody I was called to pray for in Abuja. She cannot sit because of lipo. No jokes. She can't lie down with her bone. Oh, bust. She can't lie down. She cannot sit. How can a woman be not sit down? So she's always lying like this or she's standing up. She cannot sit down. Lipo. He, 
eh, maggot is coming from there. They did not do it well. Somebody, we heard about a senator that just lost his wife. And they said she went for this one. And my question, if you appear in heaven, what will you tell God that you went to do? That's if you appear in heaven. So where will you tell God? Somebody gave you trousers and you shaped it. Eh? How can I give you trousers and you shaped it? I borrowed you. You are supposed to return my trousers. And before the trousers are covered, you have already shaped the flap, shaped everywhere. No, you cannot be shaped it like that in Jesus' name. So many people are strong in their body. That's their beauty. Anytime we see you post anything, you have never posted anything that makes sense. No value on social media. Anything. All, uh, 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 every time. Uh, uh, oh, giddy. What is it about your body that is so special? You are just eight more. You can, no, you can decide not to wake up. You can sleep and not wake up. Someone's older brother called me and said, my brother is well. Nothing is wrong with him. He just slept and did not wake up. Now means anybody can sleep and not wake up. All this, your ooh, ooh, ooh. That's it. God's favorite. Right. That's you. Come and write nonsense on top of indecent posts. How do you know your God's favorite? Right? Who told you? God's favorite. Right. Look, and the son of light has woken up. The, the, Morning of God has woken. What is it? What is this obsession that has eroded our generation? The uh, the and uh, give me lines now. Eh? I don't want to has woken up. Idolization of self. So that's where you're strong. Because if I ask you now where you're strong, you say no, I'm strong in the Lord. How do I know that you're strong in the Lord? How do I know? So some of us are strong in social media uh, showcasing. It's true. Because we are in a generation that seeks men. Meanwhile, the generation that we're looking for is the one in Psalm chapter 24 and verse 6. He was talking about generation that seek the Lord. But now, we are now in a generation. He said, yeah, this is a generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. The Lord wants to raise us up to be a generation that seeks the face of God. A generation that, you know, that puts God first. We are much more interested in a connection with God than connection with man. That's why if you put a poster now, and you don't put anybody's face, he said, God is about to move. Nobody will attend. We are looking for faces. We are looking for faces. So if you hear that, uh, Pastor Jane did not make it to not forsaking program. You are crying. Why did she make it? Why? Is it Pastor Jane that is it Jesus Christ that changes lives? So when people want to gather a crowd now, they will put Victor uh, uh, Rez and Nathaniel Bass. No, it's not the gospel. It's the music. So we are now a generation that loves music but hates Jesus Christ. When I come for Bible study now, you will not attend Bible study. It's true. We, we are a generation that rebels about everything that has to do with the gospel. We have become a generation that also rebels against spiritual authority of any kind. You have a problem when somebody is above you. There's just, oh no, oh no, so okay. You always want to be seen. You always want to be. That's where you are strong. You always want to gather people. That's where you're strong. We will decide, okay, we're having no forsaking conference. You fix your own conference. You say, this one is not forsaking. This one, you fix your own. You, you, you target. Ozubo, Ozubo, God. Nonsense name. Because anything that has to do with unity, has to do with followership, has to do with alignment in the realm of the spirit, you hate it with passion. That's our generation. Generation that hates spiritual order. So, church will fix, we're having three days fasting, um, Monday to Wednesday. That's when you start going to a, a prayer camp. He said, the Lord told me personal eh, that I am supposed to hold 
and you're looking for a bunch of gullible women that will join you in that movement. Gullible people. I'm not cursing you. That's what the Bible calls you. 2 Timothy 3 verse 16. I love to give scripture verse 6 so that you will know. That's why I love the word of God. I internalize the word of God so that you will know it. 2 Timothy, look at it now. He said, for this sort of men, they creep into houses and lead captive silly women. Silly women. Lead them with sins. Lead them away by their diverse loss. Silly women. Gullible women. Give me a translation that calls us gullible. And it's always women that are led astray by false movements. I don't know why. Eve was in, in the garden. You know, Adam was there. Serpents did not see Adam. You could have gone to Adam now. No, at least if we went to Adam, we would not have fallen by now. Because the Bible says, for Adam was not deceived, but Eve. See now. He said, for this sort are those who creep into the households and make captive of gullible women loaded with sin. So when, people, when someone calls you, you are very silly. Don't be angry. Look at where we got the, script, the word. It's true. If we are having program now, for example, and somebody sending you texts where you are, come for, come for Holy Ghost Championship, uh, 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 Night of Power, and you even foolishly go, that means you're a silly woman. You are going. And we are led astray by our different levels of lust. Lusting for wealth, lusting for visibility, our pride of the earth, pride of life. You want people to gravitate around you. That's why you are rebelling against authority. Do you know if you see real fame, eh, you will run away. Real fame. This one you're looking for, nobody is even faming you. You are just faming yourself. That's why you're moving. If you see real fame, you will run away. You cannot withhold when the whole world is looking at you. Amen. Do you still love me? Do you still love me? Don't hate me. Oh, go, 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 go. It's true. And that's the problem we have where people are not mentally developed. Because common sense will even tell you, what are you talking? When we have something the Lord has prepared for us and you are leading us to go and do nonsense. So you see those kind of people who are led astray. So what are you strong in? What do you glory in? Are you part of those that are glory in fashion? Or you glory in small naira? That's why sometimes it's as though the Lord is not empowering believers. Because we glory in one million naira. Somebody has a business that yields one million. And see, the worst part is once you get a visa to travel to UK, we can't hear a word for you. And that's how the examples will be. And the other day, I said it was... The other day, I'm, I, I'm, the other day uh, uh, we will not hear what just because you got visa to travel. Meanwhile, really wealthy people, they move sometimes every week, but you don't hear anything. Because that's their realm. But the moment you just move, um, actually I wasn't around when you called me, and my phone was, I, did, I couldn't roam it because I was in the, <laughs> as I moved, to the, I was, there was a connecting flight, I was trying to, oh, give me now, fear. What is our problem? The Lord wants to make us big, but we are limiting ourselves. See, I want you to know that your beauty is important too. We love it, but the devil does not respect it. The, the, what the devil respects is that you are strong in the Lord. The devil does not respect. We have even seen more beautiful people. With any, has any of you gone for Miss World here? Amanum? So you see now. So how beautiful do you think you are? The devil does not respect that. That's why I know that God will not respect that too. Because the Bible says, if anyone purges himself, he says in a house there are many vessels. If anyone does what? Purges himself. He will be a vessel of honor. He did not say if anyone is beautiful, if anyone is tall, Thank God for those parameters. One thing I love about God is that those things don't matter. Your wealth is inconsequential. Your beauty is inconsequential. Your height is inconsequential. The Bible says, if anybody, that means availability is what is consequential to lifting. 
Are you available to be used of God? Amen. Some of us are we are crying fake tears, but our longing is in the world. If you will use anything you can use, I see, I see. It's true. There is a longing that seated deep in our hearts for the world, but we are just pretending. I saw many of sisters crying last night, and I was I was blessed by the move of God. But how will you sustain that fire? It's true. Because if you don't do anything to sustain your fire, fire after one week now, you go back to square zero. Where you'll be showing up bomb shots. It's true. Hallelujah. How will I be strong? Number one way to be strong in the Lord is to hunger for God. Number one is hunger. Hunger for God. Hunger for God. What is hunger? It's a state of insatiable desire of God. Insatiable desire of God. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 3. Insatiable desire of God. Insatiable. Isaiah 43 verse 3. I love this. I love this. I love this. Matthew 5, 6. I love it. Thank you. First scripture. It says, blessed are they which hunger for God. For they shall be filled. That's number one. Then Isaiah chapter 44 verse 3. Isaiah 44 verse 3. Isaiah 44. Let's read together. Once you ready, go. Read it again like somebody who is alive. Want to go? For I will pour water upon him. Powerful. Hunger is an insatiable. Emphasis on insatiable. Desire for more of God. John chapter 7 verse 37. The Bible said, on the last day, that's one of my favorite scriptures. On the last day of the feast, the greatest day, Jesus stood and cried out. <laughs> he says, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man thirst. Somebody would have thought that on the last day of feast, Jesus would start prophesying, release Take your miracle, take your healing, take but look at what he cried on the last day of a feast. Somebody would have thought that Jesus would be receiving, giving out miracles, but look at what he was giving out. What is it that will make Jesus cry? He said, Jesus cried, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Jesus was redirecting our passion. If you say you're hungry, there is a place where there is food. You go and drink. You say, come on to me. Do you have an insatiable desire? It's called the, the, the joy of salvation. I don't know when you gave your life to Christ. Is it Chinese or a real one? But usually when you give your life to Christ, on our bagger, but there's something about church, about God, about prayer. You cannot contain it. Do I have any witnesses? The moment you give your life, you just want to be in church. You want to you worship. You want to pray. You want to. I remember when I was, I said, being on fire for God, that I'll come back from boarding house. Then in SS3, I'll come back from boarding house and then I'll be washing plates. It, it will be as though that this, wash, this plate washing is disturbing my time. All I want to do is to rinse the plate fast and enter the room and start praying and worshiping. One day, my father had called me on phone and said, no, came back and said to me, said, the Lord told me that there's something about you that is different. I said, it's my hunger for God. If anybody takes away hunger for God, they have done the worst thing they can do to you. Where you are now full. No. Do you know that hunger is a sign of life? Well, one of the ways that doctor will know that you are not healthy is if you lose your appetite. So the doctor will, if you, even you, if you lose your appetite, you will be feeling strange. You will go to hospital. The doctor will be looking at you like, 
And when was the last time you ate? He said, for the past seven days, I haven't eaten. I, do, there's, I don't have hunger for food. I don't know. Doctor will say, no, no, no. It shows that your immunity is down. Because if your spiritual immunity is up, you will be hungry for food. So that's why when you have malaria, you lose appetite. It means that you are sick. So when you are sick spiritually, you lose spiritual appetite. That's why the Bible says, there will be a famine that is coming. It will not be a famine of food and bread. It will be a famine of the word. So many people are going without hunger. That's why you come to church carelessly, you move in carelessly because you're not hungry. You, if you're once you're not hungry, you'll be familiar with the word of God. You'll be familiar with your pastor. When you came into this church newly and you heard the word, you were so blessed. You felt like sleeping in church. All of a sudden, you have become cold. You are no longer hungry. You are satisfied. Those who hunger and thirst for God, they shall be filled. So, you are now satisfied. Your stomach is full. See, if you finish a 21 days water fast or 14 days water fast and you come back to your house, where is the first thing, first place that you go? Judith, I was singing a song to you. Where is the first place that you go when you finish? Eh? Where? Kitchen. Powerful. I love this congregation. That means when I come to your house, I see you watching television, uh, pressing your phone for three hours. What does it tell me? You are not hungry. It is like that for spiritual things. When I see you every time, you're spending time with your phone. You're pressing your phone. Hey, you are replying every chat and every mail on social media. You are constantly online. Every time we see you, that means you are not hungry for God. Hunger has an expression. Amen. Am I talking to what kind of church is this one? Am I talking to a living church? Hunger does what? Has an expression. You cannot say you're hungry and you're pressing food. You're not hungry yet. You cannot say you're hungry and you're addicted to latest Netflix. You're not hungry yet. You cannot say you're hungry and you're addicted to social media. You're not hungry yet. Hunger must have an expression. One of the ways to know that you're hungry is that you are running after God's presence. You're running after God's presence. Another way to be strong in the Lord is in the place of prayer. One of the ways to become a strong Christian is to build your prayer life. And the best time to start building your prayer life is now that you are not married. See, I want you to know that this is your freest season in life. I don't know how else I'm going to tell single ladies that the single stage is your freest time. You will never ever have this kind of free time anymore in your life. As busy as you think you are, is your freest season. I'm telling you. The moment you marry, the moment you nurse, I'm telling you, when I was in school, oh, I used to enjoy moments of deep prayer time. Friday was my um, lecture-free day, so Friday was my moment of deep prayers. I would lock my door when everybody in the Lord has gone, and I will start praying. I will start praying. I will start learning how to pray. And I used to pray with worship songs. So you can imagine worship songs are playing on my background and I'll be crying out. And I used to love to pray Pauline prayers. I mastered all Pauline prayers and I began to pray. And I will cry Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. I will be crying, oh God, grant me the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of you. Make me a woman of prayer. This was a student. Make me a woman of prayer. Make me a woman. I will keep crying. I will move from Ephesians. And I will begin to pray that the love of God, Ephesians 3, that the love of God, that the love of God will dwell richly. And I will pray that I be strengthened in my inner man. I will be pacing around my room. Oh God, I want to be strengthened in my inner man. I want to be strengthened. And a lot of worship songs are playing. Benny Hinn is playing. Terry, Terry Tacoma, whatever. is playing at the background. And I'm moving around. 
and I'm praying oh God I didn't know I was going to be a pastor I didn't know I was going to even stand up in any pulpit I was just building my spiritual stamina in the law oh God I teach me how to tarry teach me how to wait for the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 40 for those that wait upon the Lord they shall renew their strength oh God teach me waiting power I am tired of 10 minutes in your presence I am tired of five minutes in your presence. I want to carry the spirit that makes men to tarry. Oh God, for those that wait upon the Lord, for those that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. This will be my lifestyle every Friday, and I'll be crying. Renew my strength. Renew my strength. I wait upon the Lord. I want to carry the mantle because you know, anytime I read Acts chapter 2, I'll be wondering how 500 people were gathered and only 120 were filled. So that means what, what happened to the 370 people that came there? They lacked waiting power. That means they could not stay till their miracle will come to pass. I didn't want to be that kind of Christian who will not wait till my miracle. Some of you now, the Lord has promised you, I will give you husband. Why are you afraid? Well, because of fear now, you're clocking 30 something, 36, 37. There is fear in your heart. No, no, no. What you are lacking is what staying power on the promise of God. If you know that God has never failed, show me a case study where God failed in the Bible with anybody, whether it be childbirth. You have believed that your biological clock will stop working. That's why you are afraid but the bible says for those look at what the bible says it says it says they shall do what mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint many people are fainting because they lack waiting power please don't faint your miracle is by the corner your miracle is by the corner you cannot afford to faint how else do you want to get that miracle? The worst place to be is to be in a wrong marriage. That's the worst. It is hell on earth. You better die single. You better die single. You better die. Mary Slessor came at the border of her destiny. The eve of her wedding in the 18th century. She stood there. The gospel was being preached by the man and said, Africans are still killing twins. Africans are still killing twins. Who will go for us? I wonder who attends service on the eve of their wedding. If it's you now, eve of your wedding, you're going to make your nails and blush your hair. But at the eve of our wedding, she was in service. And the man of God was who will go for us? It was the border of her destiny. Eve of her wedding, Friday night, Saturday was supposed to be wedding. So she was at the border of her destiny. She couldn't hold it anymore. She ran to her fiance and said, um, Did you hear the calling? He said, Yes. Would you go for us? The man said, Choose between marriage and standing in line with God's promises. Hey, if it's you now, many sisters are married wrong just because they're threatening them. Choose. Oh, will you take marriage or will you take Jesus? Choose now. Choose. That's why we ask you, Is he born again? He says, Catholic. Is that the question? That's not the question. Answer the question. Is he born again? He says he's Catholic. That's not the question. Is he born again? He says he's near to the kingdom. Near, next to the, near, nearly cannot kill a bed. He's near to the kingdom. That's not the question. Is he born again? But he's very caring. That is not the question. Because as a matter of fact, it is not even all born again Christians that you are designed to marry. There are things called prophetic marriage. Aligning yourself with the will of God so that you can fulfill destiny. If you lived Ayaya Kando Shokoto, if you make mistake in marriage, 70% of the time you will never fulfill your destiny. And the worst part is that many people are telling us that their marriages are broken, but they never told us what God told them initially. So you are believing that marriage is come. Marriage is not come. Did you marry who God asked you to marry? That's the question. You left us, ran off. A sister who was in our fellowship did wedding like Nicodemus. The way people are traveling like Nicodemus. That's how she did Nicodemus. We went to Jesus by the night. 
she married Nicodemusly. And all of a sudden, we saw her now. She was now putting something on Facebook. Her eyes were blue. Come for my aid, though. Come for my aid, though. How? Who will come for your aid? Well, this was a chief watcher in church, in fellowship. A lady on fire for God. But there was something. There was an appetite. There was an appetite. She was hungry, but not of God. She was, there was an appetite. So in church now, we are filled with desperation for marriage. There is an appetite that has filled our heart. Give me husband or I die. No, that's not the prayer. That's not the prayer. If that prayer was for Scotland, it's not for husband. Don't pray for husband. A sister who was my roommate those days, when we were serving after school, every time she'll be giving God October 17th, November 18th. Go every time in the morning prayer, she'll be hitting the ground. You know how Dominus will pray? She'll be lying on the ground, hitting. Marco, oh no, no, October 17th. I call. I will just be hissing. What kind of nonsense prayer is it that if you don't marry, you will not stay alive? Every time, Marco, yo, 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 yo. you are wasting prayer. If you want God to answer that prayer even faster, you should do exchange. There's something called the law of exchange. Look for something God needs and pray for it, and the Lord will give you what you need. Hannah did it when she was believing for the fruit of the womb. He said, I will offer him at the temple. God was in need of a prophet. He wanted to flush away the dynasty of Eli. He was in need of a prophet. Hannah was in need of a seed. Hannah learned the covenant of exchange. Lord, give me, I give you. Give me, I give you. Give me, I give you back. That's even a faster way to attack the husband. Lord, the one you're giving God ultimatum. Hey, if you don't give me chicken, I make I die. Die now. Somebody was just buried yesterday. That's not your portion in Jesus' name. That amen is not very strong. So terrorizing God. And that's why you're making yourself cheap before me. Do you know who you are? Royalty. Royalty. I am a royal priesthood. A city set upon the hill. Why are you hiding? Eh? Your destiny is hidden because you are not set upon the hill. You are there threatening God. Give me, give me. No. No. There are keys to marry faster than what you think. If not, you will marry wrong. And that's not God's design for you. So when you know God more, you take your time in knowing God. When you see fake, you will know. When you see the man that is not meant for you, you will know. There was a young man in our church who was a pastor, but he was a rapist. He was, you know how some people will never get serious with God. So they, he was removed from being a pastor. The next thing is that he traveled to the West and came back with a virgin sister to marry. I was just looking at the girl like this. That's who took us in the like a film. If you open your mouth and talk like that, church girl was like, I say, hey, Pastor, why does not want this one to mind. I was just looking at her. My mother said, Does this one know what she's entering into? Your guess is as good as mine. The marriage is broken. Why? Because house help was raped a sister that came was raped a family members I say this had been there now but because you have no grown to be a strong Christian your discernment is flawed some days you wake up you don't feel like praying because I realize that it's not about feeling I don't need to feel like it to pray that's one thing I've learned about the Lord sometimes you know you feel so guilty you have a lot of things you're juggling and you feel guilty that you've not really spent time with God. I have realized that most times the Holy Spirit is waiting for you. I was writing exams just last week actually. And then because of the tediousness of the exam, I have not had ample time. I was just crying on my bed. I said, God, what kind of this? I'm missing you, Holy Spirit. I was reading, but I was playing Sissy Winer's Belief for It album by my side. And as I was playing that and reading, the holy atmosphere of the Holy Spirit filled the room. I just dropped the book. I beg Moon, I carry on a book, they go. And I started wailing and crying for the next one hour in my room, screaming. When I was done, it was like they poured fresh pure water on my soul. And the Holy Spirit said to me, I've been waiting for you. I didn't go anywhere. I didn't go anywhere. 
So all those times you're using to feel guilty because you're not feeling the prayer. The Holy Spirit is there. You don't need to feel it. See, Christianity is not a feeling. It's a knowing. A knowing. So even if you wake up, your mouth is not moving. Move your mouth. If you wake up and you just start. Okay. Even if you're feeling sleepy. Okay. Start like that. Your generator is starting. Just continue. Just continue. Just continue pulling that generator. Before you knew it, there will be a transition. Pull. It will be as if somebody poured a clock in a fire upon you and you'll be shocked somebody that woke up very weak not knowing what to say is now going out of a house filled with the holy spirit this generation is fast paced we are running even when we are praying we are looking at time have we prayed for five minutes we need to stop so that we can release people no that's how people miss the encounters so people have half baked encounter because they have never learned how to tarry the more you tarry the more you carry God. For nine days, there was a promise of the Father saying, I will descend, I will come. 380 people left because they were hungry. They were going to marry. They were going for just in nine days. Others stayed there. The Bible did not record that there was full supply there. They stayed in the upper room waiting on God. Today, we're enjoying the promise of the Father. By the prices that 120 people paid. Imagine if no one was able to stay in God's presence. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Healings are going on. See, maybe there is a delay in your family that has lasted for a long time. The Lord just said to me, say, that delay is broken. Your older sister is not married. This person is not married. This person is not married. Oh, hear ye the word of the Lord. That delay is broken. The more you stay in God's presence, the more God's presence washes away anything that is on your bloodline that limits the move of God. The other way to be strong in the Lord, the number one we mentioned was what? Was what? Hunger for God. Hunger. The second thing we mentioned was what? prayer the third thing I'm mentioning now is retreat retreat there is nobody that will be strong in the Lord who does not have moments of staying away from work career, children family to just spend time with God see that encounter at the upper room was possible because they did not have a lot of business and family attachments. As a single person who is in school, maybe you should do something about my mic. As a single person who is in school, this is your best time to wait on God. See, I have found out that campus season is your greatest moment of transformation. How many of you are still students here? Be bold about it now, it doesn't matter. It's a good thing to be a student. Raise it above your head. Good, quite a good number of us. Do, do not play with your campus season. It's your greatest season of personal development. I have found out, because the Bible says, for the gifts of God are without repentance. I have found out that any mantle you carry in campus will follow you out of campus. The mistake many people make is that they get into campus and use it as a season of boyfriend, as a season of cohabition, as a season of living with a man, as a season of cooking soup with a man. Meanwhile, rightly speaking, there are two most important things that must happen in your campus season. What? Your studies. Number two, your pursuit of God. Just that. Your studies and your what? Pursuit of God. Once you can catch these two things, you will be on fire for God for a long time. So I was talking about retreat. I have found out that eh, as a strong believer, 
one of the things that will help you to stay strong in the Lord as a leader in these last days is retreat. Do you know what retreat does? Retreat unearths your weaknesses and sins. You know, there's a way you are running as a leader in church, serving the Lord. There you wouldn't know even when you are grabbing pride, insecurity, disloyalty. Retreat is your salvation. You don't even need to travel for it to a long place for retreat. You can just decide, switch off your phone. For a retreat to happen, it must be technology free, especially phone. Any retreat you go for and you carry your phone, that's what Pastor told us. You carry your phone into that retreat, you will lose your fire. From retreat, the retreat will start retreating you. You see, one of the greatest distractions of 21st century Christianity is this phone. That's one of our greatest distractions. Before, your routine was that the moment you wake up in the midnight, you start praying. Now, the devil has deceived you. Your routine now is that the moment you, start, you wake up, what do you do? You check your phone. You come and lie and say, eh, I wanted to see to put on my touch. From putting on touch, you will now start browsing, replying messages that dropped in in the midnight. This is Satan's greatest weapon against a 21st century Christian. So if you are wise, you go for a retreat. As a woman leader, you should go for retreats. At least once in a quarter, lock yourself up in your house when there's nothing going on in church and just stay there. And all you are praying for in a retreat is God, show me myself. Search my heart. Is there any evil way in my heart? Open my heart up that I may repent. See, this was the beginning of my encounter with God. My encounter with God has not been long ago. I used to be an ordinary pastor's wife who would just sit down and not have anything to offer. Even when we were making noise with the mic, we were just making noise. So until the Lord opened my eyes, I was in a meeting. A woman of God was preaching. And she turned to me and said, the Lord is going to grant you an encounter. Because I was wise, I did not wait in my house for God to grant me an encounter. I was carrying a baby. I rushed into camp of faith, Okibe, with my baby. And I was crying to God. Subconsciously, I thought I was going to hear the voice of God. That was what I, I laid down there. I was shouting, God, speak to me. You said that you're going to grant me an encounter. Oh, God, speak to me. I don't know what I was expecting to hear. You go, speak to me. That's how I was making noise in camp of faith and the first thing I heard was the Lord say you are proud ah, I was shocked I didn't know the next thing said you are a liar and as I was being confronted and convicted visual instances of my lies and manifestation of pride started showing up oh, there were so many things I didn't know was wrong with me even as a leader that opened up for me. That's how my life and my Christian work is characterized by retreats. There is no year. In fact, usually, my birthday is my season of retreat. My birthday is coming up on Tuesday and tomorrow I'm sneaking into a camp just to go and ask the Lord, what is it again that I picked up that I'm not aware of? Watch me. Because Apostle Paul says, so that when we are done running, we will not be what? A castaway. Say, I beat my body and I put it under what suggestion. I think it says Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. I beat, or 2 Corinthians, I beat my body and I put it under what suggestion. So that, no, 9 27. Yes, it says, but I keep under my body and bring it under suggestion less that by any means when I have preached to others I myself should be what? Custom. so if you want to be a strong Christian in these last days you need to learn periodically on your own to sneak out 24 hours lock up yourself in your room put off your phone and you're saying God search my heart this has become my greatest testimony in life I would have been on my way to hell as a pastor's wife, just doing women fellowship. Uh, uh, until the Lord convicted me. 
my tongue changed my life changed now I realize that when I pick up the mic I know I'm not a lecturer anymore I am a woman carrying the unction of God because you are not called to lecture that's not your assignment you are not a lecturer that is teaching us theological implications of theories no that's not why you are here you are here as an oracle of God the Bible says let him that speaketh speak as an oracle First Peter chapter 4 verse 11 let him that preacheth preach as what as an oracle the Bible says and why Peter yet spoke the Holy Ghost fell upon them I think it's Acts chapter 10 verse 4 he said why Peter yet spoke the Holy Ghost fell upon them what is it about the voice of Peter that carries the Holy Ghost anybody can be speaking and people nothing will happen yes this one says if any man speak let him speak as who an oracle so stop speaking as an orator <laughs> speak as an oracle of God Acts chapter 10 I think it's verse 4 the Bible said and while Peter yet spoke powerful verse 44 thank you while Peter yet spoke these words the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word what was it that Peter carried? That with the moment he picked up the microphone, the Holy Ghost fell. That's what I was looking for. And I was asking the Lord, baptize me, radicalize me with fire. So that I will not just be an ordinary pastor's wife without anything to match, anything to show for it. May I be a woman of fire. That while I yet speak, <laughs> There will be a manifestation of the Holy Ghost. The next thing that you need to be a strong Christian, as I begin to round off, is that the study of the Word. The study of the Word is very important for you as a Christian. The study of the Word. I was quoting a scripture in Amos. Is it Amos 8-9? That where the Bible says, There will be a famine. But the farmer will not be of food and drink. But it will be, thank you, my brother. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send a farmer in the land, not a farmer of bread nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the word of God. Verse 12. And they shall wonder from sea to sea and from north to even east they shall run to and fro to seek the word of God and not find it somebody say God forbid so the Lord is commanding us now to hide the word of God in us that's how the Chinese Christians survived the wave of persecution even up till now do you know what they do because sometimes you come to a congregation only one Bible is present and they will tear the Bible into pieces and share to all the members of the church and tell them please memorize them because they know that the government of China will be coming against the Bible so they will tear each page pyam, 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 and share and everybody will memorize different chapters that is given to them and then they will come on Sunday when those persecutors come and they look for Bible, they will not find Bible anywhere. So they will ask you to internalize it. So when they come on Sunday, they will say, we want to read John chapter 1 and verse 2. The person who had the page that John chapter 1 verse 2 fell on will stand up and quote the whole of that place. And that's what they used to preach. So the way I say now, give me James chapter and projector will do it. You become a projector. So the pastor will be preaching and say, give me James chapter 5 verse 7. The sister that memorized James will stand up and say, verse 7 says, thou shalt not move your way. And, and the man will say, what of verse 12? Extend it. And the sister will say, verse 12 says, thou shalt not. Okay, jump to 17. Human beings became projectors of the word just by internalizing the word. American preacher visited them and saw that kind of manifestation and they were crying to the preacher said please pray for us so that this persecution will go away America said please the man said please don't pray this kind of prayer 
America is suffering now for lack of the word. He said, the reason why you guys have, pers have persisted persecution and resisted persecution is why? Because you have internalized the word. So in our generation, people love food more than the world. When we were growing up, we used to say that you breakfast before, Bible before what? Breakfast. That's what we used to growing up. You must do your devotion before you think of breakfast. But now in our generation, you may wake up, we are thinking, what shall man eat? Meanwhile, the Bible says, for man shall not live by what? But by? That means there is a switch that man can live by. If there is no bread, there is another bread. That means if you look around you and you don't find bread, there is another type of bread. It's the word of God. The word was framed by the word of God. So I want you to make a habit of studying the word. The Bible says, my sheep heareth my voice. So my question to you is, whose sheep are you? Whose what? Sheep are you? Many of us now, immediately you have pain here. Or pain on your leg. You go to Google and you type, I'm having pain on my leg. Whose sheep are you? My sheep heareth my voice. That means just say he's saying that his sheep always listens to the word. His sheep always reads the word. Where can we find the voice of God? It's in the word. It's in the word. But we have people who are the sheep of Google now than the sheep of the world. So the, anything that is happening to you, Google it. Uh, they tell us Google is your friend. Everything that is happening, you do what? You Google. Parenting, you Google. Everything you Google. The Bible said concerning a woman who was carrying twins in her stomach and they were rumbling and rumbling. What's her name? What's her name? Who? Some people are saying different things. I'm hearing two. I want to know the second one. Who? Powerful. Show us that scripture. Yes, write this one. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they do what? They follow me. John 10, 24. I know them and they follow me. So whose voice have you been hearing? Have you hearing the voice of Google? That's why when you are sick, you first of all say what the doctor said before what the word of God said. Am I saying you should not go to the hospital? Some of you always complain. When will I know when it's the Holy Spirit? When will I know when is I know what your problem is? Do you know why you're suffering from that? Because you are mixing the word with Google, with Facebook, with Instagram knowledge. So because of that, you are not able to hear and discern which one is the word of God. But if you give yourself primarily to studying the word, you will not ask, hey, I don't know which one is the word. I don't know which one is the spirit. No, the word of God is clear and always clear. If you give yourself to constantly listening, studying the word, you will know when the Lord is talking. He says, my sheep, the one that is my sheep, they hear my voice. So if you are struggling with hearing the voice of God, whose sheep are you? Are you a sheep of Instagram, a sheep of Facebook, or a sheep of the world? Do you have a biblical explanation for everything going on in your life? You need to have it. There are some of my friends that even their jokes are phrases from the world. There was an old shoe my friend wore one day and was passing. So the other one saw her, laughed and said, this one is Hitato, alas. So their jokes are even biblical jokes. They will see you, they say, this one is Hitato. And it came to pass. We all laughed. But something struck me, I said, this is what people make jest of, using different kinds of vain words. But people have even grown to use, every joke is cracked from a scripture of the word. Is that your lifestyle? Or are you known with vain words and vain babblings? Rebecca, the Bible said that the, the two in, in her stomach were rumbling in Genesis and looking for direction. And the Bible said, and she inquired of the Lord. And the Lord said, two nations are in your womb. Yeah, verse 22, before 23. And the children struggled within her and said, 
if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire. If it's now, when two babies are struggling in your womb, what will you do? Mothers, what will you do? When you notice, urr, 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 urr. say the truth, what will you do? Eh? No, there's, some, there's a place you go. Even the doctor will send you to scan. So you, you carry your, your body immediately. Hey, scan, no, oh, scan. But this woman heard this. She'd not first of all go for scan. She wanted to hear what is the Lord saying about this movement. It may be prophetic movement. It may be prophetic movement. It may be that. That means her first and primary place to find answer is in the Lord first before medicine. She rushed and inquired of the Lord. So just by inquiring of the Lord, the Lord opened her eyes to see the real destiny of her children. So many of us, our parents, we are, we are forcing our children to go and study medicine because we refuse to inquire of the Lord. We are start forcing them. You must study medicine. You must study law. As if that's the only profession that God created. The things that our brain could not carry, that's what we are forcing our children to study. And verse 23. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. This was the revelation that helped Rebecca navigate between Jacob and Esau. So when we're looking at Rebecca and we're angry with her, that she, she was the one that sided Jacob to go and uh, go fast and collect the blessing from Isaac. Look at what she was acting upon. There was a word from the Lord that the Lord gave her. He said, this is what will happen. So position yourself well to make sure this prophetic word comes to pass. So do you have a word from the Lord? You're trusting the Lord to marry. Do you have any scripture on marriage? What's your scripture? Somebody give me one. If don't give me without telling me where it is in the Bible, don't. Good. I love that I'm hearing scripture. This one, this side are not talking. You are just trusting God for marriage without scripture. That's how we are. We are trusting God for a baby without scripture. It's a very bad place. So what is the Lord saying concerning my marriage? Where in the world will I believe the word? You must have scriptures for every aspect of your life. So that when there are naysayers, you stand on the scripture. So you are trusting the Lord for a baby. What is God's word concerning children? You're trusting the Lord for marriage. Give me scriptures. When we were in school, our pastor made an announcement that said, I will not wed you until you have read 12 books on marriage. Sisters began to hustle. We bought, today, if you come and see my library, there was no book that Miles Muro released I did not read. Joyce Meyer released I did not read. Uh, Kids. And there uh, was any release I did not read. Out of communication by Campbell. I cannot forget all those books. We were chewing them because we wanted to marry. That's why when the, this, that, this family, a woman was coming from them. I can't remember the scripture. Please help me find it. A woman was coming. A woman died. I think it's that when the lawyers came to ask Jesus question. And they asked me, said, there was a woman whose husband died and the younger brother married over the woman and the band died and the second brother married and the one died and the third brother married I have never understood that story how can seven brothers because of tradition marry one woman they know has demonic spirit because what is killing all of you seven of you have died under the hands of one woman a woman with marine spirit something is running in that lineage that needs deliverance and they have got to ask him question you see tradition can be very bad somebody marries and dies you still go there and marry again and die and go there and marry again and die <laughs> and they asked Jesus he said please Lord stupid question when we get to heaven when we get to heaven who will be the rightful husband of this woman something is wrong with those people that means there was something that one puts for them who look at, I love what Jesus answered Jesus said have you not read that was his first line. He said, have you not 
red. No. Yes, go to the next one. No, give me a New King James. See, there is no marriage in heaven. Yes, give me New King James of the other one. Oh, you know not the scripture. Give me the one that says, have you not read? I love it how that one puts it. You see, you err, for you know not the scriptures, nor the power of God. So, when people are erring because they don't know the word. The, I like the translation that says, have you not read that there is no marriage in heaven? Powerful scripture, have you not read? If it's not, maybe you're giving me Mark. Give me another episode that told the story. I don't think it's Mark. But you get the point. People were marrying nonsense because they did not have scripture. Just say, have you not read? That means an antidote to your ignorance is reading the word. If you want to stand away from deception that is coming on these last days, be a person of the word. I round off quickly. The next one is be strong in, in consecration. If you want to be a strong Christian, you must be strong in consecration. Romans chapter 12. Dearly beloved, present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable which is your reasonable service be strong in your consecration what is consecration it means that it's a value so be strong in christian values but consecration means setting yourself apart for the lord the bible says in book of first corinthians chapter 6 is it verse 18 19 20 know ye not that your bodies yeah Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which ye have of God, and you are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Verse 20. For you are bought with a price. But give me 16, 17, where you say, flee from immorality. Know ye not. He says, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But the sin that he committed fornication but he that committed fornication sinned against his own body it's true there's no sin that you do that will release something from you semen from you into another body no sin tell me is he lying it's true that's why the bible says there is only everything you do is outside of the body this is the only one that will release something from another person into your body if you lie you lie on your own you cannot release anything inside my body is there anything you release inside my body by lying nothing but the bible says this one is the one where you sin and something releases from another person into you that's why it's dangerous people are arguing is sin not sin why are we magnifying immorality this is why we are magnifying immorality because if you lie even though you're going to hell you're going on your own but this one two human beings are going together he says every sin one of the greatest weapons that the enemy is using to emasculate the church in these last days is the sin of immorality. It's a sin of immorality. So you need to flee it. That's how one of the ways to be a strong Christian. That you are strong in your values of consecration. No matter what, no matter who you are, no matter who you are as a man, you don't have the audacity to deceive me. And one of the best times to make those decisions for yourself is even while you are still in school or before you enter school set. So that no man would think that you saw him and made that value. It should be your life's value. When I got into school, I said to myself, I said, I will never get into a relationship until I was done with school. It was a life value I set for myself. So when men were coming, crushes were coming, it kept ringing in my head. You will never get into a relationship. Even when I was crushing on brothers in fellowship, I kept hearing, you will never get into a relationship until you are done with school. It's a life value. Even when people, my mind was telling me, what if you don't longer marry? What if you scare all these brothers away? 
I kept telling myself, I would never get into a relationship until I was done with school. Amen. Amen. So I spent five years on campus as a student and I did not get into a relationship with anybody. I had crushes so, so that you not say I'm holier than thou. I had crushes here and there. I even kissed one brother. Sorry now. Spiritual sister. Sorry now. But that was what kept me. It's true. That was what kept me. I just remembered myself. I said, no, 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 no. It will not happen with me. I, oh, the temptation was strong. I'm sharing with you so that you know that there will be temptation. You know, sometimes we preach as if we fell from heaven, right? So when you're hearing the word, you think that the preacher fell, he had never done anything. No. I had crushes. I even kissed. In fact, it's not one brother, it's two brothers. Confession time. Because as I said, one brother, the Holy Ghost reminded me of the second brother. So let me complete my confession so that it will be true and true. But I held myself. Some of you, what has made you compromise your standard is because you believe that kissing is not sin. That's what has made you compromise your standard. That thing that you believe that, ah, it's kissing. No, kissing is not sin. Are you kissing anyhow? Because that was also a problem I had. I said, but kissing is not fornication. Huh? But that's the gateway to fornication. Why is it on the fence? Why is it on the fence? So you start kissing a brother from there. You'll be emotionally entangled with the brother. And you are now dialing his number every day. You're calling him, calling him, calling him. How are you now? Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. A brother showed me a sister's WhatsApp message to him. That's message of desperation. He ignored the sister. And the sister was bombarded. How far now? You're not talking to me. I'll die, yo. I'll faint, so Something is leaving me, yo. I, she was in DCA. She said, I cannot concentrate in DCA. Hi. Some of you are joining me to say hi. But that's your... If I open your text message now, church will dismiss. Should I try one person now? Who will be a scapegoat? Amen. But that's it. The devil has come on us with a great rod. And he, used, he has used immorality and indecency. He used indecency to water down the value we place on chastity. Before, before you see a lady slap, so it was sacred. But now it's not difficult to see lap now. Just do like this, lap we should do like this. just step outside now. You see laps. I, I was hanging out with my children in, in Lagos. My friend warned me last year. He said, I'm warning you, don't come out with those children in the evening. All this going to watch cinema. I thought it was a joke. You dare not, my in Lagos. You cannot anymore. You're going to cinema with your little children. You'll be doing like this. Because people are literally wearing pants. They say it's boxer shorts. Biker shorts. Have you? Biker, right? Are you a biker? Are you a biker? No. Have you seen any biker wear that short? Say the truth. No. Are you going for Olympics? No. Go and move the reason why you are wearing biker shorts. Some of you are looking at me like spiritual sisters. Now, when I open your page on Facebook, you hear you are You wear your doing with biker shorts. It's true. Pepper them. That's what we're doing with biker shorts. So, because of our immorality, um, our immodesty in dressing, we have watered down the sacredness of keeping our bodies. So, sex is easy now. But that's not your portion in Jesus' name. Because the Lord is raising a generation of young women who would not compromise their standard for anybody. Do you know there's a way you dress that before a man will approach you, eh? 
he will calculate his movements. Think about it. Before he says, hello. Have you seen anybody dress so beautifully and you're passing main markets with your high heel, beautiful shoe and somebody smacking your bum bum? Is it possible? No. The reason why somebody will see you and smack your bum bum is that there's something opening there. It's true. So the Lord is cautioning us with a great rod that we dress well. Of course, you know that we are not preaching against dressing beautifully. Is that what we are preaching? No. To dress well. Because one of the causes of delay in some sisters, I have also found out, is drab. They dress drab, dry. Because men see physically. It's God that sees the heart. So if you're a mature sister and your dressing is not good, you may need to adjust it, adjust it as you position yourself for marriage. So I'm not even preaching against dressing well. I'm preaching against indecency. That's what the Bible is against. Amen, somebody? So, if you want to be a strong Christian, maintain your values. What are values? Personal code of conduct. Something you would rather be caught dead than do. It's true. It could be your fashion sense. Anything. I'd rather be caught dead. God helping me than sleep with another man that is not my husband. I will do my husband good all the days of his life. I will be a suitable helpmate. Let it be your value. Let it be your value. Many married women now have been victims of men because they refuse to place this as value. And then the last one, do ministry. Anything that we teach you that centers only on self is not the gospel. Because the gospel is evangelistic. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 17. Say to Archippus, take heed to thy ministry which thou hast received of the Lord that you fulfill it. Take heed to the ministry which thou has received of the Lord, that you do what? Yeah. If I were you, I'll remove Akipos and I'll put my name. So the gospel is evangelistic. And I found out that one of the keys to be discipled in the house of the Lord is to do what? Is to do ministry. Yeah. The moment you take responsibility in the house of God, nobody will teach, need extra follow-up for you. I remember while in school, when I started a cell, before then, I could be gisting with my lodge mates and they would hold their hand around my waist and I would be walking down. But the moment cell started, that thing stopped because as I was inviting people for cell, it would be hard and bad to hear that a cell, me that is now, they were now calling pastor because I was inviting them for sale. The brothers in my lodge were now holding my waist and moving. So you see that responsibility sanctified me. Because I was taking responsibility in the house of the Lord, I was purely sanctified. It's true. So one of the fastest ways to be a strong believer is to take responsibility. Is to take responsibility. If you take responsibility, it will help you. But there is a bad side of taking responsibility, which is when you now become rebellious to spiritual authority, when you start seeing the move of God. I'm preaching this because we are women. Because it's a problem that if you don't serve as a woman, mm, you, you get into trouble. So you now see that no matter what you do, the Lord has placed you under spiritual authority. When you're doing response, taking rest, that's why I don't even advise for people to run off with some degree of responsibility without discipleship. Ma, do you understand what I mean? I don't think it's God's will for people to run off with some degree of responsibility without discipleship. I believe that 
discipleship should never end. That even when people are serving the Lord and doing ministry, they should still be undergoing discipleship. So that means if you are a cell leader or you are a women prayer group leader or you are anything for single ladies or you are a choir leader and you begin to take responsibility and throw away discipleship, you will be an error in the kingdom. Because the way the kingdom was designed is that the fuel, the tanker that carries fuel, must do what? For himself. So what it means is that you must intentionally submit yourself to mentoring even as you become a leader. Mentoring will save you. It's one of the fastest ways to be a strong Christian. Do you know what mentoring means? That somebody has made mistakes, a lot of mistakes in her life and she has positioned her life as a story for you not to make those mistakes. Mentoring is like living a life 30 years compressed. You see a woman of God who has been born again for 30 years. Then you join her mentorship group or you come under her mentorship group. What it means is that she's compressing 30 years experiences with mistakes, with back and forth, with a rise and fall and she's giving you on a platter. There is nothing I have seen that matures a believer, strengthens you despite your age as mentorship. And God has given us a powerful model in Pastor Raphael. Good. Powerful. What does he mean now that I will no longer make mistakes that she made when she was my age? I will no longer make mistakes that she made when she was a younger believer. I will no longer, because she has offered herself to help me in that journey. I find that many women who want to be seen in church, who want to do ministry faster than any other person, run away from mentorship, usually. I don't know why. I know. You know, they will be close to pastor, but they will not like pastor's wife. I know. So, I have found it as a problem. You see many of us who, hey, we are serving the Lord. Hey, you will now go to pastor. No, you can pastor cannot undress you. In mentorship, there is undressing, there is circumcision, and pastor does not have the power to undress you as a woman. So you know that the rightful person that should do that undressing is the pastor's wife. That's how many sisters put a lot of men of God into trouble in their churches. So if you miss a season of mentorship, you have missed a season of rising fast. This is your greatest opportunity that you submit yourself. Don't run away from women. God gave women grace to raise women. I found out. Because pastor can overlook things, but the pastor's wife will not overlook. You're wearing your cleavages here. We're seeing your breasts. Is pastor's wife that's him? But a pastor will not see that. He will not even bother. He will just send you the message that the Lord says he should tell you and go. So in church, those days, I used to find women who, they will buy crayfish and oporoko from Norway. And they will pass, pass, they will pass my seat. Oh. We have something special for you. Oporoko and crayfish. Who, who, in whose office is Oporoko and crayfish? Pastor will now say, Oh wow, so thoughtful of you. Could you give it to my wife? Whenever Pastor says, I say, Oh, again. It's of you to bring it straight to the woman of God. You move. Hey, Pastor. We brought up Oporoko and crayfish. Why? <laughs> You are making me act drunk. <laughs> Why? Because you just you abhor anything about woman leadership. It they prepare you. It they prepare you. You prefer that a man is over you than a woman is rising. Something you are just too competitive around woman leadership. No, no. That's why the Bible says, "Honor your father and your mother." There's no competition in this thing. That a, a father is standing is because a mother is supporting the father. Amen. And it should be your normal lifestyle. A lifestyle that honors father and honors mother. It's true. Do you know what God has done for you? Some of us are looking for your opportunity. As you go by ministry, you know how much you need a figure over your life. 
It's true. So, oh, 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 you have somebody to call. I say, I'm having confusion. Would you please clear my head? And there's an issue. We don't know what you have. Some, some of us who, as we're climbing, is like, you know where. The world is in need of role models that will put your life in order and teach you how it's done. Many platforms that you minister and be a blessing in life is by the office you honor. Look at how my darling sister Messi came here and preached. I'm sure that if she was a disloyal, rebellious person, she won't even come close not to cough, cough, talk of. Do you know how many years it will take her to organize this program and gather people and they will come in their numbers? She may just do it in her office or in her house. This is what it means conferring honor on somebody. So what it means is that now people will not start believing in her because I'm a woman of God believes in her. Because if she does not believe in your ministry, she will not give you her platform. People are not clapping. So it's possible that God had been telling her about single ladies grooming. How to groom single ladies, how to package single ladies. But she wouldn't know how to go about it. But these kind of platforms will manifest her. And you don't need anybody to hear you. You just need the right person to hear you. Once they hear you, your message goes around the world. So why are we competing with office that will change our lives? It's true. So how do you buy into the heart of a mentor? Service. Service. Once you serve a mentor, you buy. Blood of Jesus. Is this 131? Somebody say blood of Jesus. When you serve that office, you carry the mantle that is in that office. The grace that is in that office becomes your lifestyle. That's how to carry power. That's how to carry power. Serve. You're looking for a need. There's a little girl in my church. Young single lady. Do you know how we became very strong people? Two of us. Is that every week she will bring a, a, a bag of bottled water. As little as bottled water. How much? 1,000 naira. The thoughtfulness alone. And she was so consistent with it. Every week, see, a, a student, she would say, Ma, I brought you the bottled water. Every week, bottled water. Every week. I knew there was something special about that lady. Do you know the next thing? This young girl currently now is living in my house. I just said, no, I want to help you. I want to help you. Just by that act of service. I told the story of how I finished preaching with very high heel shoe. That's why I don't wear them anymore. So I finished wearing the high heel. Immediately I came down. A lady rushed me in church. I thought she was coming to receive power like they always do after the anointing. She came, she said, Ma, please, I'm going for a Shebi. Please, will you lend me your shoe? You know, I have never heard anything like that in my life before. But that's an ordeal of mentorship. Many people they go to go to mentorship for what they will receive from their mentor and they will miss their, miss their destiny so you see pastor Rafaela now you're eyeing her hair and you go, you go here and I tell her ma please is the hair for me is the hair we see you snapping you, all you are snapping is you want to snap the dress so that you can go and look for it you see that that's why we are not getting mentorship blessings that we ought to get if you want to position yourself to receive the mantle that the woman of God carries, serve the mantle. And I realize that service doesn't have to be too expensive, depending on the level you are. Some people will do the expensive things, but do within your level. Start from where you are and serve your way to breakthrough. You are a mature single. You are trusting the Lord for your marriage. Look at the marriage model. It's as simple as ABC. You, there is no how you service. There was a lady, 45, in our church. 
we came for single ladies retreats. We usually have single ladies retreats every January. So we came for single ladies retreat two days. And towards the end of the retreat, I would demand for mature singles to sacrificially draw something because 45, what are you to lose? Come and service your altar. She came, she said she had been running away. This was a lecturer in Iber State Polytechnic. So she said that she had been hearing that these things work, but she had never practiced it because she was too conscious of her money. I said, I don't need your money. So she came and said that for the first time in her life, she was going to honor pastor for one year consistently. Ma, I don't know how God does this thing. This happened in January. She married in October. It is to tell you that sacrifice works. There was a lady, this is my final story, a lady that lived in my house. If you see that girl, she's so skinny that even you will not recommend your brother. You will not recommend your brother. You go run. I better go. She did, there was nothing so glorious and favorable about her. The only thing she had was service. She was so good with children that I didn't want to let her go. She was so good with taking care of children. One day it was one of my babies she was carrying that the brother said, I like you. I like the way you take care of pastor's children. It means you can take care of my children. She's married with a son now. So I have instances of young ladies, I can tell you from now till tomorrow, who they don't really look like it. But all of a sudden, the blessing of the Lord comes upon them. The torch light of the Lord beams on them by virtue of this understanding. So when you come before authority, don't approach for what you will collect and get. Approach from the angle of service.